Hello, friends. <laughs> I'm MK Archlink, and I'm back for this episode of Rawtism, where we're going to be talking with my friend Osiris about my favorite holiday, Dia de los Muertos. Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Osiris. I met Osiris through my first year at working at Spirit Halloween, and we, we've been great friends ever since. Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, first, Dia de los Muertos. Um, most people know it as just like the sugar skull holiday, but there's a lot more to it. Yeah, it's definitely part of my culture, which is the Mexican culture, and it actually gets celebrated for three days. So it all starts on October 31st, is um, when you decorate the grave sites of your loved ones, or you can create a little altar in your house. And um, that includes the pictures of your um, family or loved ones that have passed away. And then on November 1st, you celebrate the children that have passed away. But growing up, I didn't, of course, didn't have children. So I put pictures of my pets that have passed away. Well, those are your children. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, November 2nd is when you celebrate the adults. Okay. That's pretty cool. And the altar, it's called an ofrenda, right? Yes, ofrenda. Yes. I love how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so on the ofrenda, do you keep the pictures all on there the whole time or is it just the days you celebrate them? No, no, it's the whole time from the 31st all the way until the 3rd when you put everything away. Okay. And growing up, was this just a normal thing to you guys or was it taught like not everyone does this? Uh, usually, I mean... We were just taught that it was just done. I didn't suspect other people didn't do it. So. Okay. That's pretty much like Catholicism for me. I thought everybody did yes. the random stuff we did. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, there's probably a lot of misconceptions about Dia de los Muertos. Again, people see it as just like, oh, the sugar skull holiday. They'll dress up as like different skeletons and stuff and not really know um, what the meaning of this stuff is. Does that bother you? Um, sometimes it does, but you kind of get learned to just let it go because you can't force people who are ignorant and want to stay ignorant. So you just got to pick your battles. That's a good point. And you do have kids. Yes. Lovely children. How, with them growing up, how did you teach them about Dia de los Muertos? Uh, so we actually didn't start celebrating it till we got to this new house, which isn't until 2015, only okay. because there's this weird nook in my hallway which I never understood why and <laughs> I just had the immediate inspiration to just turn it into a 24-7-365 Dia de los Muertos ofrenda. Yes it is beautiful <laughs> and has no point to being there other than to make it an altar. Yeah I didn't know what it was for so I was like okay we'll just you do that. Okay so before then you never really made an altar to celebrate the holiday no okay that's fair you didn't have the space and now you just have a random space yeah. to do it. now it's there <laughs> um growing up like that and having your culture what parts of your culture do you think that most people who don't know as much about it what do you think they're missing out on they're missing out on the the whole sense of the tradition and why it's so special to us, a lot of people just like because of the colors. Like, let's take Cinco de Mayo. Okay, honestly, if you go to Mexico City or Mexico at all, we don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Nobody knows what Cinco de Mayo is for. They just know it's Taco Day and Tequila Day and time to just get drunk and celebrate. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, Cinco de Mayo is about the Battle of Puebla. 
and how, you know, we defeated the French, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, but our independence isn't until September. Okay. So people are celebrating as if it's this big thing, but it's just leading up to the big holiday? Yeah, but it's it's just a, a small battle. Okay. I mean, it was a huge battle, but at the same time, it was just not a big thing for us to celebrate. You don't see us celebrating Cinco de Mayo in Mexico. So people are just making it something it isn't? They pretty much appropriated that <laughs> holiday just to drink, just like a lot of us have appropriated St. Patrick's Day. Yes, that is the first one that comes to mind. Yes. So it's like, oh, look, we're Irish for a day. Look, we're hey. Mexican for a day. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Do you find, like, if you go to Mexican restaurants, do you find that um, it seems like to have a fake atmosphere? Or do you think a lot of restaurants in America that sell Mexican food have the, like, vibes? Um, it actually depends on the restaurant. Like, okay. um, the ones in our area, I, I find them to be good. Um, it's just the ones that have become Americanized, mm -hmm. and now it's like, mm, I don't I don't like this restaurant. Okay, so Taco Bell is your favorite Mexican restaurant. Uh, it's not even considered <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> what well, a lot of people do, they call it Tex-Mex as well, but that, no. Yeah, yeah no, I, they're, they're just a fast food restaurant, not yes. really. Not really Mexican, but people see tacos and they think, oh, Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> okay, getting off track because I love I love learning about your culture. But back to Dia de los Muertos. Um, were you taught any stories when you were younger about the history of it, or were you just taught this is what we do? Yeah, it was just this is what we do. Okay, so it's kind of like in Catholicism, we pray before each meal. There's not really anything we're told about it. We just we do it. Okay, and another part of it. The ofrenda, how far do you go, like, in your family with who you put on the ofrenda? Um, well, I don't have a very good family history knowledge of all who's past, so it's just current. Okay, so just the people who've been in your life that you recognize are gone. Yes. Okay. Do you still do the pets from your childhood? Yeah. No, actually, I think I've forgotten about them. Oops. <laughs> I will definitely have to add them. <laughs> Now now you have that guilt. Yeah. My bad. Now they're in the land of the forgotten. Have you watched the movie Coco? Yes, I have watched Coco, but a lot of people haven't heard of this one that was way before Coco, which is called The Book of Life. I love that movie. That one is my favorite. So would you say that's an accurate depiction then? Yes. Okay. So if The Book of Life is what you base after... Um, in that movie, if I'm remembering correctly, they're like the two gods, like life and death. Yes. Okay. So are you taught about that in a way, or is it just the knowledge that they exist? No, I wasn't even taught that they existed. Oh, you learned about it in the movie? I learned about it in the movie. I was like, oh, there's, there's the land of the living and the land of forgotten. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you just watch the movie and you're just like. Oh, so that's what I'm supposed to know. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> this is what happens when we don't teach our children. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that brings up a very important point that we shouldn't erase our culture and try to just be Americanized. We need to keep the culture from the other places because America is a melting pot. So that's, that's an awesome point, actually. That's better than you just knowing everything. Like, you're a human. You were raised the way you were raised. And it's a good thing. Like, if you're listening to this and you have a culture, like, I don't have much of a culture. I was Irish. And so, yay, St. Patrick's Day. I don't know much about what's back there, except my family came over during the potato famine, and there's some German in there that hopefully aren't Nazis. But... <laughs> But I don't have really that strong of a culture other than the knowledge that we were of the first to come to America. We've been in America for like forever, but for people who are closer to the immigrants, like, do you know what generation American you are? 
I would be the first. No, sec- no, first, first generation American. Nice. <laughs> so your parents weren't born here. Well, actually, no. So if that's what you meant, because I'm slow. Um, Bye. I was brought here in 1984, not to Ohio, to California. Okay. And so then Evelyn would be the first generation. Okay. American. So you were born. Where exactly? Mexico City. Mexico City. Wow. Instead of just Mexico. Mexico City. Mexico Fancy. City. Yeah. <laughs> I love that because I, I actually, I, I knew you grew up in California. I did not know that you weren't born in America. So that's pretty cool to know. So I was Americanized pretty much. Yeah, that makes sense. Coming over into America, you would want to fit in. So they probably would have taught you guys more about like, hey, this is how we're supposed to act in this place instead of remembering like your culture. That makes sense. Yeah. Misguided, but makes sense. Yeah. It's awesome with how Americanized you are and how young you were when you came over that you do embrace some of your culture. I really love that. Yeah, I've never uh, hidden the fact that I'm Mexican. I love telling people I'm Mexican. Um, I do get offended when they say if I'm Puerto Rican, but again, that's a whole. Are you Native American? Oh, yes. My daughter got called Native American. Um, and I've been called uh, Filipino or um, Middle Eastern as well. Interesting. That's interesting. Just like we need more education about autism, we need more education about who people are yeah and that it's not just white and not white right have you ever been called like chinese or anything really random uh no no i i don't think okay so. i think that would be blatantly racist yeah like honestly because absolute ignorance honestly we need to be celebrating these cultures and learning more about these cultures instead of just mishing everyone up because it makes me really sad like i grew up there were white people and there were not white people. That's that's all I know. Everything I've learned has been what I've actively tried to learn because I want to learn more about people because people's cultures are so cool. It is pretty cool. It's really cool. I love learning about all the things you learned and then how much of your culture you knew and how much you had to learn through media, like the Book of Life. That is so cool. And I have a friend who's Native American and her culture is pretty cool. And she was adopted, so she didn't have a lot of it, but she contacted her birth parents, and she told me about that, and that is so cool. But you guys, you're both not white, but you're very different. Yes. So it's not, it's not, it's not always black and white. No. <laughs> no, it's a little bit brown sometimes, but gray. <laughs> so it's, it's really cool to learn about your culture, because there are people from different cultures, and even people in similar cultures don't celebrate the same or they don't have the same stories from their past that is so cool do you do you know any other mexicans that um celebrate different than you do um some of them aren't happy with um my day of the dead being 365 okay um they're like no there's a reason for a holiday but i'm telling them so why do we have to only remember our loved ones on those three days why can't we remember them every day um so you know that's just their closed-minded thinking yeah they want to stick to full traditions and i'm like no i want to remember all my loved ones every day i want to pass by and say good morning good night or yell at them because they didn't tell me something when they were alive (laughs) so you know i love that so there's the difference in how people celebrate and that you believe it's more personal mm-hmm. and how you want to celebrate is to have it up all year round. And then there's some people who think that you don't have like the right to choose how to do it, maybe. Um, yeah, they just think, you know, I'm doing it for attention. But again, this is in my house. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't see where they're getting that idea, but Again, I get it when the people are stuck in their old ways yeah. and they don't want to budge. That's, again, that's their problem, not mine. Exactly. I love that. That's a great quote. You you live a lot of your life with that's their problem. Pretty much, yeah. 
Um, it was pretty cool to have you on my podcast. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. I have of course. I'll, I'll try to make more of a script or like a list of topics for the next time. I was just so excited. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> yeah, no, we can. Um, and then I uh, brought you a picture of my altar that I cleaned up. Oh, so that um, you can share it if you want. I don't oh, know you where want that. <laughs> but, put it somewhere. Yeah, every, well, it's on my phone. Oh, okay. okay but I can uh, text it to you. But yeah, I just um, always, once we get close to, October, I redo the whole thing. I clean it, dust it. And then on the day of the celebrations is when I cook the meals that they enjoyed. So, but again, I'm trying to find a way to put a barrier because now the cats and the dogs are going in there eating their food. No. So, uh, I got to figure something out. Maybe baby gates or something, but. Baby gates, plexiglass, make it like a little museum. Yeah, so I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that one out, but Houdini keeps jumping in there trying to eat the food. Oh, no. I've lost a lot of items because they break them, so. Oh, that's so sad. It is very sad. That's so, it's, it's like, oh, this is so morbid, but it's like death all over again. Like, here's the thing for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> oh, we're both wonderful people laughing at you. Yeah. I mean, you got to laugh. That's how we go. That's how we go. <laughs> so do you feel comfortable with the picture you sent me, me like posting it online or would you rather? Oh, no, that's why I brought it for you. Okay. So you can show them, you know, this okay. is what I have. Then I'll make that the picture for this episode. And then people can see an example. And then people can also yell at you for doing it wrong. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> just... Again, I'd love to have you on to talk about other things about your culture and have like an outline so it makes more sense but I really I really just wanted to get you on the show okay so that we could talk because I thought this would be really fun and I rarely see you yeah absolutely you can do that <laughs> okay anything else you want to say to the random like five people who listen to my podcast you have more than five people <laughs> <laughs> um I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh listening and I hope you guys look into the book of life and Coco as well um but do a little bit of research about day of the dead and understand it a little bit more um again it's just not something we can appropriate and uh, lose the meaning behind it, especially if you want to teach your children about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. And I do want to say it is my favorite holiday because I love the idea of honoring your loved ones this way. It's not my favorite holiday just because I love skulls, which I do love skulls, but it does branch off of the fact that it reminds me of this holiday. And I love the beautiful culture behind it. And memorializing your loved ones and I'm still learning about it I don't know a lot it isn't my culture I didn't grow up with this I learned about it later in life this is gonna come out um November 4th because that was the closest day to when the holiday is so it's gonna come out after the holiday but it's fine it's it's fine <laughs> I'm a good planner I know what I'm doing sort of <laughs> We'll we'll try we'll try next year. We'll do another one that's more focused and more organized and it'll try to make it on the day. Yay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this was very random. No, you're fine. This was good. I hope you had fun. I had fun. I did. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> and you gave me a ducky penguin. And Dumpkin. <laughs> I love him so much. He's my baby. A very big baby. Okay, so that's all I have to say. You said your piece. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else you want to bring up? Uh, no. Cool. I love I love the cherry nose. Oh, yeah. That's so cute. I keep staring at it, and I'm just like, it's weird to look at someone's nose, but it's so cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to a, a kind of very unscripted episode of Rotism. I know this one isn't as much about autism, but it's something that I get really excited for, and I believe that's a part of the autistic joy I have. I get really excited about things that seem simple to other people, and I really, really love Osiris's culture, and especially this holiday makes me so happy because it's so beautiful. <laughs> and I would love maybe 
um, next year or just at another time. I would love to do a deep dive and go into the history and stuff and learn about that because that would be so fun. Like, I know some history, like basic, but I'm not an expert. It'd be cool to become semi expertian <laughs> You'll be an expert of the dead. Yes. <laughs> okay. So as always, please remember you are wanted, you are loved, and you need to stay in this world. The world would not be the same without you. Okay. So bye. I'll see you next week or on my TikTok or on my YouTube. Please follow me there so that I can be a person. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>